I'm super excited for today's video because I've got a really big reveal. I finally stocked my UNS 5N with a very, very cool fish. Hello and welcome back to Logan Random Aquascaping. My name is Logan and today I have a little bit of an update for you guys on my UNS 5N. So I set this tank up about four weeks ago and in the beginning I went through a little bit of melt. I planted everything from tissue culture so usually I deal with a little bit of melt when I'm working with tissue culture and it wasn't too bad in this tank. Mostly the Cuba carpet and the alternate there are Rhinichii mini but things stabilized very quickly. I replanted where necessary, removed any melted tissue and things are finally on the up and up. So I think in the next month or so, this tank is gonna really start to grow out now that the plants are rooted and established. And we've got some pretty cool stuff to look forward to in that sense. And the big news of today's video is that I have stocked the tank with a beautiful pea puffer. This is one of the smallest puffer fish on the planet and it has so much personality. So I wanted to take the opportunity to kind of teach you a little bit about some of the specific care instructions that the pea puffer has. And and if it's something you're interested in, hopefully you can use this video as a little bit of a primer. Go out there and do your own research and see if it's the right fish for you. So let's get started. So the dwarf puffer fish, also known as the pea puffer, comes from Southwest India. And in nature, unlike most other puffer fish, they're often found in very large groups. They breed many, many times a year, and the males and the females look very, very similar to each other in terms of color and size. So they can be very difficult to sex. However, they are very aggressive and territorial. So when you're considering how many you wanna keep in your aquarium, the first thing you wanna consider is, okay, what is the size of my aquarium? Is it planted? Is there a lot of hardscape? Because it's very important that you break up line of sight and you have sort of different territories where subdominant males can hide and the more aggressive pea puffers, you know, won't be necessarily on top of their tank mates. Additionally, they can be fairly aggressive with other species. So it's really recommended that if you're gonna go the pea puffer route, you just do a pea puffer tank, nothing else, you know, no shrimp, definitely not snails, considering that snails are a big part of their diet. So play it on the safe side and design your tank for the pea puffer, which is exactly what I did with this UNS 5N. I knew I wanted to play with the verticality of the hardscape and I layered in different pieces to sort of break up line of sight. Now in terms of the pea puffer's diet, this is where they can be a little bit tricky to keep for people who aren't experienced with somewhat difficult fish. And I wouldn't classify the pea puffer as difficult. However, getting them to eat voraciously and regularly takes a little bit of work and a little bit of conditioning. So I would say they do best with live foods, specifically black worms. If your local fish store carries them, California black worms are gonna do the job. They do really well with them, but they also do quite well with frozen foods. And it's really important that you vary a puffer fish's diet. Once I had my puffer fish getting used to live black worms, I started feeding a variety of frozen food as well. And they've taken quite well to frozen brine shrimp, frozen daphnia, as well as frozen blood worms. But I do recommend that you start with the live black worms because this will sort of get your pea puffer socializing with you. I shut my filter off when I feed and that makes a big difference and it just adds to that conditioning process. So if you decide you wanna get multiple pea puffers in your tank, first of all, I wouldn't really do that in anything less than a 10 gallon. Play it on the safe side and go with the 20 gallon if you wanna be extra sure, but there's just no guarantees. If you are gonna add a bunch of pea puffers to your tank, add them all together on day one. Don't get one in the beginning of the month and then at the end of the month, add three more. What's gonna happen is that first pea puffer will establish territory and probably come in very aggressively at the newcomer. So you wanna get as many as you're gonna have at the fish store and then add them all together. And this will help sort of get them acclimated together and then they'll sort of find their pecking order and things will naturally play out. So that's all the time we have for today. If you like this type of content, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I do new videos every Friday. Thank you for watching. This has been Logan and I'll see you guys next time.